Welcome everyone to another edition of There Must Be a Better Way. And uh, today we're going to be covering the second of the 10 characteristics of God's teachers, honesty. And I got to tell you, this is the one actually I've been dreading the most. And after I read, I've read the section, which is only two paragraphs long in the Manual of Teachers. And I've read this a dozen times and every single time I go, oh no, oh dear, this is, this is gonna be tough. Uh, because first of all, it says, uh, the very first sentence says, all other traits of God's teachers rest on trust. Well, I don't know why, but trust seemed to be very, very easy for me. And it might've been because of the way it put it, took us through six different steps of trust, how it develops, how we approach it, how it approaches us, how we learn from it. Uh, this honesty, this is all one big spoonful, ran right right on in. And so um, do, does everyone have the, uh, have the section open on honesty? I, Where I like, is it, sorry? Baraka? Where is it exactly? I can't see it because I'm on my phone, but um, it's, is this, it, it, it's in the it, manual for teachers, chapter yep. four, section Got two. It. Thank you. Okay. Got it. So I was wondering if someone would like to read the first paragraph. Any volunteers? Yes, Judy, go ahead. I would. Yes, oh, indeed. Thank you. Honesty. Although other traits of God's teachers rest on trust, all others, yeah. once that has been achieved, the others cannot fail to follow. Only the trusting can afford honesty, for only they can see its value. Honesty does not apply only to what you say. The term actually means consistency. There is nothing you say that contradicts what you think or do. No thought opposes any other thought. No act belies your word. And no word lacks agreement with another. Such are the truly honest. At no level are they in conflict with themselves. Therefore, it is impossible for them to be in conflict with anyone or anything. So that's quite a, quite a, uh, like a, I double dipped, I double dipped area. Where, where are you reading that? That's uh, in the manual for teachers at the back of the book. Okay. Chapter four. Called the characteristics of God's teachers. And then this is section two of that. And if you and have was, a hard copy, it's page 10. Uh, and the book of three. Yeah. And she, Judy just read the first yeah. paragraph. Yeah. Uh, 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 Carolyn has got the uh, the sparkly version of it, sparkle version of it. To oh, find good. Us, Carol. Then, then Carolyn can let us know if we if if there are any differences between well, this one. I did, have the the did you find the manual for teachers? I have the manual for teachers. Okay, there is there are, there are thirty one chapters. The fourth chapter is what are the characteristics of God's teachers? Oh, I see. Hang on. Why can I not find it? I've got the introduction. I'm not, I've only just got this and I'm not familiar with it. Okay, the characteristics of God's teachers. Right, and then there's, and there's, then there's trust. And then, okay, honesty. honesty. Page, page 44 honesty. is honesty. Okay. Good job. Yeah. And uh, as far as I know, there are no differences between the... Foundation for Inner Peace version and the uh, Sparkle version in the Manual for Teachers. They they are all pretty much the same. Okay. All of the all of the differences have lie in the text. 
uh, and the various editings of the text. And, and the lessons? Uh, lessons should be pretty much the same too. Because when I was doing the lessons with Nook Sanchez uh, for a year, Nook and Corrine, they would read one from each book and uh, there would be differences sometimes in the, the okay. phrasing. Not uh, that often. No, I'm in love with my hard copy of the manual of the, the student book. And I wish yeah. I had my other ones too, but oh well. Yeah, but the manual for teachers, I think is pretty much word for word, no matter which way you go. All right, so let's let's talk about this with what we just read here for the first first time. All other traits of God's teachers rest on trust. Um, that is just reinforcing what we have done in our previous meetings. How important that is. If there is no trust, there is no there's nothing else, nothing else to be had. Once that has been achieved, the other the others cannot fail to follow. And the others being the other nine that we're about that we're going to be covering over the next uh, nine weeks here. Um, every single one of those: honesty, tolerance, gentleness, joy, defenselessness, generosity. <laughs> excuse me, patience, faithfulness, and open-mindedness. Each of those rely on ultimately on trust. Only the trusting can afford honesty, for only they can see its value. I cannot trust, I cannot be honest about what I do not trust. I cannot be honest if I don't trust what is being put before me, what is the truth of me, and what is the truth of my father. I must trust that before I can be honest about who I am myself. Because if I can't trust God, how can I be honest about myself? How can I be honest about who I am and how I am to interact with my siblings in Christ? Honesty does not apply only to what you say. The term actually means con consistency. If I am not consistent in my word and my deed, I am not being honest. If I am not and if I'm not able to be honest, I cannot, it's because I cannot trust who I am and what God wants me to be, what God has created me to be. The term actually means consistency. Now, I had not ever, before reading this, I had not ever really equated those two words together. So it's, it's, really, it's really an enlightening thought that, here are two symbols, and we know that words are symbols of symbols. Here are two symbols that very much do not align up in normal usage, but yet when we when we study them, when we look at what their true meaning is, what they what the symbol behind that symbol is, they both are the same thing. They are both consistency. They are both my ability to remain consistent with who I promise. Who I promised God would I would be, who I would work towards being, who I would try to emulate by being consistent in my behavior and in my dealings with my brother, my sibling in Christ, and with the universe. For this is not just a promise to the to us here in this room or all of us on this planet, this is a promise to the universe that I am going to be consistent in who I am in interacting with my brother, with the siblings in Christ, with the brother, with the sonship. There is nothing, here is the consistency. Inconsistency, there is nothing you say that contradicts what you think or do. No thought opposes any other thought no act belies your word, and no word lacks agreement with another. That's scary. For me, that for me, that's like the ultimate challenge. That's a that's a big shopping list right there. Nothing I say. No, no thought. No word, and no agreement. 
is lacking in honesty with anything else, anything else. I am pure and true in who I believe I am, who I trust I am, who I know I am in that ability to interact with the rest of the universe, not just, not just the brothers and the, and the brothers of the sonship here on this world, but the entire universe. I have to be totally honest with who I see myself as in relationship to the universe as I saw it, as I pre pretended it to be, and who in the universe of God, of God's creation, how I can be honest with that as well. And I have to be honest about what this universe is and acknowledge the truth of it, that it is an illusion that I have created. I cannot fool myself into thinking that there's anything real about what's going here. And I cannot fail God's creation by thinking that there's something other than that that is true, that is honest. There is nothing, literally, nothing honest about this world as I see it here, except that it is a teaching mechanism for teaching me who I truly am as, as God created me. And the only teacher that I can trust, that I know I can honestly put my faith in, is the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is that gift that has been given to me by God in the moment of this separation, this trust can be put in the, in the Holy Spirit and be the place where I truly can be honest about who I am. I cannot be honest about who I am in this world because this is not honestly me. This is where I have come to prove who I think I'm not. Very important that. That's the difference between my feelings of this world that I think I'm living in and my truth, my being honest about who I truly am as God created me. Such are the truly honest. At no level are they in conflict with themselves. Therefore, it is impossible for them to be in conflict with anyone or anything. And the best way for us to be honest with that is by honestly knowing who my true mighty companions are, who my siblings in Christ are, and what they are. I see not a series of individuals in front of me. I see reflections of the true honesty of what I and they are as God created them. And this is where I can, this is where I can place my honesty. If I try to place it anywhere else, if I try to think I'm, I'm honest about anything else, then it's not going to work. I'm not going to be able to place any kind of truth in front of that if I don't see the truth as being what I am and what God created me as. Any other thoughts about that? Any, please, any thoughts at all? I'm looking back I'm at the like lesson this, I'm before. Thinking, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. And I, I, this line popped out to me. We're not each step in this direction so heavily reinforced, it would be hard indeed. <clears throat> Ms. Carolyn, it's all yours. <clears throat> I've been struggling to follow you, Baraka, and when I read it, what came to me in the last little bit was that the individuals in front of us, in front of me, are not individuals in front of me. They are the reflections of me, the mirror of me from within, 
as we are all created. With that they, are, they are your mighty teachers whom you have asked before you to teach you the lesson of who you truly are. But in fact, they are not different. They are reflections of within me. You, you have, they are projections from you. You have projected out onto the screen of the universe that which you wish to see. And you can have them as either being lessons in fear or lessons in love. I ask for these reflections before me, these mighty companions who have I, who have I have asked to be there. I have asked you to be here to prove to me who I truly am by teaching me who I truly am. And I guess I would use the word reflection rather than projection because projection suggests that I'm controlling things. You in, are. So you are. I, I don't want to do that. I want to, I am reflecting because I asked to be taught. So show me, reflect for me. Yes, but still, if you're looking in a mirror, who are you actually seeing? Yourself, right? Right, so if I'm- Okay, so, so, if, if, so if you're looking in the mirror and what, what you're truly seeing is yourself, but what you think you're seeing are other individuals, they are all reflections or projections of you in that mirror. I try to I try to think of it as a movie screen. And I'm the movie proje I'm the projector at the back of the theater. And I'm going to place up on that movie screen anything I want. Anything I want. And right now, what I want is six siblings in Christ who are here to help me learn who I truly am as God created me. That's the movie I'm watching up on the screen right now. I am not a victim of this world. I am the source of this world. But that's why I'm trying to, for me, I don't want to be controlling all of this. I'm asking to show me. So if I see each of you, that's an aspect within me that comes from the Holy Spirit, from God, from the universe. It's not controlled by me. All right, well. And I guess for me, my openness to that. If, if this makes more, it's this makes more sense to you in, in seeing it that way, then, then truly then that's perfect. That's perfect. As long as, long as you don't see yourself as being a victim of this world, that's the important thing. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. You, you, are, you are in charge. You are the one in charge of, of, of the world that you see. And, 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 and as, soon as, as soon as one is able to accept that responsibility, one is able to see the strength of what the Holy Spirit is helping you learn to be. You make the choice. I, I make the choice. I make the choice of what I want the Holy Spirit to help me with and what I don't want it to help me with. I make the choice of who I think I see before me and who I know is before me. I think I see various brothers in Christ, siblings, siblings in Christ before me. What I know to be is that I am seeing various lessons that I have asked to be put before me to teach me who I am as God created me to be. There is no other purpose for this world. The ego may have a million different purposes for this world, but none of them are true. The only truth, the only purpose this world has, in, in, in fact, is to teach me what I am not and what I am. I am not the ego. I am not the ego's conjuring up of magical forces. I am that which God created me.
How's that, Carolyn? I think we may be saying the same thing, but different semantics. It's possible because symbols, words I, I are symbols don't... of symbols, yeah. Once I ask to be shown the, the, the show me the lessons I need through the people that come my way that I've presented with, I need to be open to those people. It's not for me to say, oh, wait a minute, I don't like that person. Don't show me that person. That's me controlling. It's not me allowing. Okay, I understand. I see what you're saying. Absolutely, I hear you. Absolutely, absolutely. Anyone else have any thoughts about that? You're frowning, Mary. Oh, I don't mean to be. Sorry, you it's thinking? just I, you're you thinking. know I I don't mean to frown. I know I have like this uh, frown line. But I can't. You know, I'm not getting Botox, so it's you're there. Thinking. But I, I didn't. I didn't feel like I was frowning. I'm just contemplating uh -huh. the really interesting discussion. So I'm just listening. All right. So let's go on to the second paragraph. Anybody about any volunteers to read it? Yes, Mary. I'd be happy to. Okay. Thank you, Mary. So sure, thank you. The peace of mind which the advanced teachers of God experience is largely due to their perfect honesty. It is only the wish to deceive that makes for war. No one at one with himself can even conceive of conflict. Conflict is the inevitable result of self-deception and self-deception is dishonesty. There is no challenge to a teacher of God. Challenge implies doubt, and the trust on which God's teachers rest, oh, I'm sorry, and the trust on which God's teachers rest secure makes doubt impossible. Therefore, they can only succeed. In this, as in all things, they are honest. They can only succeed because they never do their will alone. They choose for all mankind, for all the world and all things in it, for the unchanging and changeable beyond appearances and for the son of God and his creator. How could they not succeed? They choose imperfect honesty, sure of their choice as of themselves. The peace of mind which the advanced teachers of God experience is largely due to their perfect honesty. Without perfect honesty, there is no peace of mind because you're if you're not, if you if you even within the back of your, the deepest receptions of your mind, if you believe that you are being dishonest, you cannot have peace of mind. There's always that little gnawing in the back of the brain, in the, in the back of the ego that says, uh-huh, see, see, you can't give it all over, can you? No, you got it. You got to lie about something. You got, even if it's lying about who you are as God created you, even that, if you can't be perfectly honest with that, then you're not going to have peace of mind. And that's this is where this is where I've come up against speed bumps and speed bumps and speed bumps right here at this at this sentence right here. It is only the wish to deceive that makes for war. Think of think of the the gross examples we have right now before us in this world of deception 
and how that has led to how that facilitates war. I can't even say it leads to war, it just facilitates it. How do we, how do we heal that deception? By praying for honesty, by asking the Holy Spirit, by taking this deception and placing it up on the altar and saying, Holy Spirit, here is the deception that I wish to give to you. I don't know what to do about this anymore. I give this to you and ask for honesty instead. Conflict is the inevitable result of self-deception. I can't, I can't even think of another way of looking at that sentence. It's so, so blatantly, blatantly true. Baraka, the sentence right before that, you know, I've got it underlined and I've been doing the course for many, many years and I have little notes. I have a mm. note from 2016 and an underline for the sentence. Yeah. Right. No one at one with himself can even conceive of conflict. That's from 2016. And that was a hard year uh, in many ways for me to get that you know, to be at one with myself where I would not even conceive of conflict. Could you read that again, please, Mary, that line? It, the, yeah, the sentence is, no one at one with himself can even conceive of conflict. You know, so therefore, I, I you know, I, I thought, okay, I'm not quite there. I'm not, quite, you know, at one with myself. It was a wake up call. I got work to do. I've got to, you know, like realize who I am. Otherwise, I will live a life of conflict, which I've done for 68 years. And, you know, do I want to do it for the rest of my life? Maybe not. I don't, it doesn't sound like so, a very good idea to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why I'm here. That is right. why I'm here because I need the reinforcement that you all give me. So thank I you. thank you for being here and oh. being my brothers and sisters in Christ. Absolutely. Well, we thank everyone, including you mostly for being the teacher and that that's for pointing that out, emphasizing that particular sentence, because it is a key sentence, not only in the section, not only in this chapter, but in this entire course. If I am not, if I'm not honest with myself, then I am deceiving myself. I am deceiving myself. And it's so easy to see in a simple sentence like that, but it's so difficult to see when looking out at a world of deception and think, really, is all of this wrong? It, 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 is it possible that, th that this is all wrong? Yes. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yes, it is all wrong. But, it is, but that doesn't mean that I'm bad for it. It just means that I have yet to realize who I truly am as God created me. And then accepting that, accepting that. And I think that there's a, there's another, uh, all these other, uh, secure, excuse me a second. <clears throat> all of these other characteristics of God's teachers <clears throat> all really add up to acceptance. I must accept each one of these characteristics as being who I truly am before I can see myself truly as the creation of God and how God has created me. There is no challenge to a teacher of God. Challenge implies doubt and the trust on which God's teachers rest Secure makes doubt impossible. Makes doubt impossible. To be truly honest about who I am. It's, it, it's funny, I, I'm, I, I'm trying to think of other ways to say these amazingly simple sentences 
And I can't, I just, that, that is truly how the teachers of God need to see themselves and each other in the multitude of the truth of ourself, of our sonship. To look out on the sonship and see that although it appears in this place to be made up of a huge, uncounted number of beings, minds, thoughts, that in truth, all of that is all one piece. There is no jigsaw puzzle that can crumble into a bunch of different pieces. It is all one piece. One puzzle, one piece. Complete and whole. And as God created it. So therefore, they can only succeed. They can only succeed because they never do their will alone. They choose for all mankind, for all the world and all things in it, for the unchanging and the unchangeable beyond appearances, and for the Son of God and his creator. In choosing for who I truly am and acknowledging who I truly am and being honest about who I truly am, I am choosing for the entire sonship because there is only one mind here. There's only one being here. There's only one lesson to learn here. All of that has to do with being honest about who I truly am as God created me. And when I say who I am as who God created me, I am not talking about this meat sack here. I'm talking about the mind that is attempting, attempting to wrap itself around the thought that all this fiction, all this story that I've been trying to tell myself is nothing more than that, just a story. That I am truly beyond anything individual as a person, as a seeing myself as an individual on this screen, a one of six, or seeing myself as a billion, billion, billion different beings uh, in this world, in this universe. I am one. Would it be accurate to say I choose for the whole world, for all beings? You cho you're choosing, yes, you're choosing for them because you are in charge. You are choosing for them to see the truth because no one else is going to do it but me, but the I, the I that God created which in this form thinks it is separate from God. So I am true here truly to see that who I truly am has nothing to do with what I see before me in this world. I am as God created me. I am the sonship. I am my own true self which gives me the ability to communicate with every other aspect of the sonship and make the choices that this is talking to. Uh, let's see where they are. Yeah. This way, and as in all things, they are honest. They can only succeed because they never do their will alone. If I am truly making my choice as a perfectly created child of God, I, that choice is universal. It is what God created. Any other choice, first of all, is a choice made in fear other than, rather than love, and is also a choice made in separation rather than in unity. 
They choose in perfect honesty, sure of their choice as of themselves. Perfect honesty is because I know that anything other than the choice I make is a choice made in fear. I make my choice for love in love as God created me. Any other thoughts about that? Well, it's knowing that in my purity abides God's own. That's the oneness of who we are. It's just saying what you said. There's only one mind, and that mind is divine. The ego mind that we think we are is not real. Because it chose itself in fear rather than love. In fear, yes. That's yeah. right, because... The opposite to fear is love, and love is all there is. Love is all there is. Yes, that's right. That sounds like a music cue. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone else have any thoughts about that, please? Brenda, I hear you. I, I see words moving up on your lips. Talk to us, please. Well, I'm just... Uh, this is all, this is my first time through the teacher's manual mm. and um, coming to realize that I'm not my body and I'm not everything I see with my eyes. I, I, I have glimpses of peace and, and calmness and everything is okay. And I think that this is encouraging us to live in that space of Everything is perfectly fine, no matter what. It's all going to work out. It's already been worked out. And it's just, I'm just here to understand this, that I can't change myself. And well, you're you know, we're are. all okay. <laughs> yes, that's right. Well, uh, as further up in that, in that same paragraph, um, there is no challenge to a teacher of God. Because... Yeah. A challenge says that I have something to defend. And the teacher of God has nothing to defend, knowing the truth of what they are, what we are as God created us. We are, not, not the word is not indefensible, but undefendable. There is nothing to defend here. There is nothing to make any different than what the truth is. And by acknowledging the truth and being honest about the truth, I can see myself as being completely free and clear of any conflict because I'm honest of who I truly am. Yes. If I defend myself, I am attacked. There that one took me years, but every <laughs> time I thought it, it brought me such resolution of peace inside to the conflict outside. Mm -hmm. And I soon came to learn the very practical uh, use of that. If I defend myself, I am attacked. So <laughs> I started with conflict coming to me, just, just not engaging. And that really, over the years, you know, it really has learned it, uh, uh, taught me you know, but going with the flow. I mean, still, believe me, I, you know, put my little damn thing up there and try to make a pond or something, you know, but mm. defending myself is absolutely useless. And it's exhausting. <laughs> and futile because then the other person only attacks them all. It's like you can see their points and it's like, right. If I can project love instead, it, and it's a vibration, it's not a thought, but it starts with the thought. It's getting easier. Uh, it's, it's getting easier with, with my companions, is reinforcing the value of that. So yay, mm -hmm. honesty does yeah. not mean attacking someone. Right. In fact, it means the exact opposite of it. That's the way you need it to be. 
that's fine. All I know is that Holy Spirit loves you. God loves you. And we can just relax in that love as long as, as, as soon as you're willing to. As soon as, as soon as you're willing to join me in this love, I join you with it. Yes, Mary. Well, I was just going to, Judy, you really made me think back to that lesson. In my defenselessness, my safety lies. And I love that lesson. And I see that, you know, for me, um, my studying Byron Katie has, you know, really reinforced that. She, she says it so clearly that defensiveness is the first act of war. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, says it so clearly. Oh, I love that train in the distance. Who's got the train? Brenda, I love it. That's one of my very favorite sounds. Um, me train. too. It's, I live in Bruce Station, and mm -hmm. that's the highlight of my day is when the train comes You by. bet. Got yeah. it. Got yeah. it. Uh, makes me want to sing, you know, I've been working on the railroad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's Sweet. God's clarion call to bring us all home. Yes. <laughs> Mary, yeah, we're on nice. the train to heaven. We're on heaven's train. I hear a peace train coming. I hear it. Oh, I love that. Love mm -hmm. that, Baraka. Here's yeah. the train call. There it is. Okay. <laughs> nice. Sweet. And I, I was thinking the son of God needs no defense against the truth of his reality. Right. Because the truth is the son of God. There is, there is no difference. There is nothing in conflict with it. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We are, as the Son of God, we are the truth. Mary, we, would you say that line again in my defenselessness? My, my safety lies. It's safety. a lesson. It's one of the lessons. I forget what number. And then, like I said, you know, Byron Katie says, you know, defensiveness is the first act of war. And she demonstrates it so beautifully. You can Google you know, Byron Katie defenselessness, she, she gets on stage and she says, okay, you know, tell me something bad. And somebody says, oh, you're such a know-it-all. And she says, wow, you know what? You might be right. Tell me more, you know? Okay. So there's no war there, but the minute she says, I'm not a know-it-all, I'm not saying I'm a know-it-all, you know, that's war. It's a really interesting, you know, I love watching those, you know, it kind of makes it more what do you call it? Digestible or right. usable. She has, a, she has a huge library of YouTube videos. Absolutely. Yeah. Un, yeah. yeah. Unlimited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and very helpful, I find. And her books, I find helpful too. Yeah. Loving What Is. And her name Thousand again. Names for Joy. Byron Katie. It's a woman, but her first name, Byron. Byron. Her last name, B-Y-R-O-N. Yeah. And the Katie, last name. K -A Katie, K-A-T-I-E. But everybody calls her Katie. I would highly recommend Loving What Is, a book, or any of her books, yeah. or any of her videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's very, you know, in alignment. There's a story, and I, I even spoke to her. I went to one of her, I saw her in person, um, and I asked her if she had studied A Course in Miracles, because when I read her books, I mean, I have ACIM in the, you know, okay, that's a lesson, that's a lesson. Um, she did say, I believe that, you know, when she was in that house where she was living, you know, like I forget, it was like a halfway house. Um, there was a Course in Miracles book there. Now, to the extent that she studied it, I don't know, but her method of, you know, teaching is in alignment, I would say very much so with A Course in Miracles. It's like the lessons from the founders of Findhorn. It's right in line with what we're learning now in, in the meetings during the week. It's what's in alignment here. Like it's all, it's truth. And there's only one truth. Yeah. And when we defend ourselves, we're only attacking ourselves because there's only one of us joined to the mind of God, in the mind of God, not even joined to. There's only yeah. one God. Like scripture says, hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. Who's Israel? The sonship. Who's the sonship? We all are. 
you know what else? You know the sign above the oracle at Delphi? Know thyself. Isn't, yeah. isn't that it? Yeah. Okay. That to, to know here? and to know oneself is to love that oneself. That's why yeah. we're here. Remember yeah. who we are and to solidify it so that it is only what we are. Yep. That's something to contemplate for a second. Know who I am by knowing who I am. Mm -hmm. And being honest about that. Mm -hmm. Not trying to not trying to deflect or make excuses for or find other meanings for it. Know who I am by knowing who I am. And by knowing who I see before me as being who I am. And treating that which I see before me as being only the truth of who I am and being honest about that. Hmm. That's how we were created. That's right. We can be a whole. Well, like I, and go on. It's, Sorry. it's just our imagination that has said otherwise, seeing this exterior world and all the problems and everything else it we created it god never did it's totally apart from who we are yeah and it demonstrates as how we are what what we what we need to do is <laughs> align with who we are and behave from that place of knowing who we are and then we can demonstrate that by how we are. But what we get caught up in is judging others who are maybe not coming from that place of knowing who they are. And we judge how they are. He did something wrong. I'm going to judge. But you're not judging who he is. I mean, if you can't, who he is, is love. But how he presents, that's what we judge. And when yeah. we judge that in another, we judge it in ourselves. That's the, that's the key. Because it's the it difference is... between those two words. I got to write the book. It's the difference between who we are and how we are. And I love that those two words have the same letters. Just jumbled, that's all. We, we just jumble it up a little bit. Exactly. But what a right. difference. What a difference. When I discovered the difference between who my mother was and how she behaved, I could love her no matter what, because mm. I knew that how she was wasn't who she was. How right. she was could be critical, judgmental, complaining, whatever. That's not who she was. And so when I could see, then it was like I had x-ray vision. I knew who she was all the time and I could love her. And I told her, there is nothing you can do or say that will keep me from loving you. Nothing. You could slap me across the face. I said that. And I could love her and see through her so that I could care for her with incredible purity to the end, to her last breath. Because she is you. You bet. She is love. I I thought, and then she, she said to me from her deathbed, Mary, you are so, no, why? She asked me the question, why are you so good to me? What does that mean? That means why are you so God to me? Why are you so love to me? Oh, and I said, mom, it is my honor. It's my joy. It's my purpose to be love for you, to love you. What a gift. It was the best gift mm. ever. The best for both, gift. For both of you. Absolutely. 
And the idea that one cannot approach that kind of mindset without being honest about who I am as God created me and that I am beyond and defensiveness. I do not have anything to defend here. So therefore I cannot be attacked no matter what you, what the ego may think you are doing to me. In fact, I am completely invulnerable because love right. is love is invulnerable. There's nothing she could do or say that would hurt me anymore. I felt like a duck. You know how water runs off a duck's mm -hmm. back? That, right. that was me. I'm the duck. But I'll tell you, it took me reading two or three chapters from Eckhart Tolle's book, mm. uh, the, the new one, what is it? A New Earth. A new Earth. Chapters two, three, and four on the ego helped me understand this in a practical way. And by the way, it was Eckhart Tolle that led me to A Course in Miracles. He kept referring to it. And I thought, whoa, he's a smart guy. How'd he get smart? Okay, I'm going to get smart. How did he get smart, right? <laughs> and then I did it. But it took me like 10 years of rejecting it before I actually did it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, fin finally, honesty wins out. Yay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and it's the honesty and the trust of who we really are. Yeah, Virginia. True. Like it's, well it's so simple. So simple. We go round and round and round and round trying to understand instead of just trusting honestly who we are. Because that's the way we've been created. Right. Right. Let's, let's just contemplate that for a second. Holy Spirit, we give this to you, this ability to be trusting, this ability to be honest. We give to you all the obstacles that we may see in our lives that are against those characteristics. We give them to you and understand that by placing them on the aisle, on the altar, and being totally forgiving of those characteristics of untrustworthiness and dishonesty, being fully forgiving of them in ourselves and giving them to you and asking them to be transformed into that which love wishes to see. We thank you for the strength that you give us, that we that you are there for us to turn to, turn to, and be that which God created. And in that we say amen. 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 Beautiful. So um, far. Um, and may, I, may I say one thing here? Please um, do. That with our power of love that we have collected together here in our half dozen of enlightened ones, I would like us to hold a moment of thought towards an individual in this illusionary world who seems to be causing a great deal of trouble. Mm -hmm. And that is the Russian czar. Uh, and... Zelensky said something very wonderful in his address to Congress. As I recall, he very carefully said the words, put in love, put in compassion. So it's easier to love a mother, but I'm wondering if we can send that same love collectively to the heart of a person perhaps in need of putting 
in these acceptances of the true loving nature that he is and there there is what is god's truth manifesting in all of us so i say collectively god bless you and let's just put in god's compassion into yourself amen Amen. 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 In punto. In punto. Judy, that was beautiful. Thank you. Oh my gosh. This is it. He, you know, every everything is either an act of love or a cry for love. This is it. Let's give love. Let's put it put in. in love. Now, when I think the name or hear the name, now I'm pretty much since I heard Zelensky saying that. Well, I don't know, but I am making effort. It, it occurs to me, put in love. Love that, love that. Thank if you. If we Thank can't, you. who can? What, you, what, Virginia? If we can't, who can? Yeah. Aha! Yes, sister, yes. <laughs> it's our job. That's our job. That's why we're here. Mm -hmm. that we're here to shine at this time to change this illusionary world right little by little degree by degree we could continue to see truth instead of fear to see love uh -huh. instead of fear to see with consistency. Honest, honesty with consistency with consistency yeah it reminds okay. me of james twyman Son of a gun. Son of a gun. Wonder where we live from. <laughs> Brought us all together. Thank you, Brother James. We are indebted to you. We're indebted and we're to indebted you. to ourselves. <laughs> That's right. Because who who created who created the idea of James except the mind of God? And, yeah, we, and who keeps showing up but us? That's right. All right. So next week. We have tolerance, an interesting word, which one I, which I, until I read this chapter, I would not have thought was a, a proper characteristics of God teacher, but tolerance is very important in, in the way that it is described here in this, in this uh, chapter. And so um, I will send out a reminder next week, uh, including this, uh, this, is it wouldn't be a one paragraph very simple deceptively simple and i hope that we can all uh come very tolerant come back together very tolerant of all that we think we see in this world and understand that the tolerance of it is that which keeps us from conflict i think tolerance is a verb not an adjective mm. Well, it's also a characteristic of God's teacher, depending on if you, if you believe on the, in the chapter here. Well, I do, <laughs> by actively, actively being it. Mm -hmm. All right, well, you thank guys. you all very much. I will be sending out the, uh, the link to the recording to this. And uh, then uh, in the middle of next week, I'll be sending out the link to our next meeting. Any other thoughts before we go, anyone? One last thought about Please what's marry. coming up. Tolerance. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm looking at my book, and from 2016, I have a an exclamation point in ink, and I don't usually use ink ah. in the margin, and that is rare for me to do that. And the first two sentences underlined, so it's going to be for me. It is one of the great lessons. I'm so glad we're doing it. Right. You know, God's teachers do not judge. Oh yeah, right. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah, right. Sure. Piece of cake. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. See you next week. I'll be okay. practicing between now and then. All right. Thank, Thank you, you all very much. I love you all very much. Thank, Thank you, you. Baraka. Welcome back Thank and you. welcome back, everybody. Thank you for listening. Okay. See you. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you for hearing me and helping me. Bye bye. Oh, darling. <laughs>